Welcome back to Talkville. Guys, uh, very excited to have you here today. We're uh, we're trying to increase the listenership, the viewership. So if you have friends, let them know that Rosenbaum and Welling are doing a, a freaking rewatch Smallville show with their good or buddy Let us Ryan. know what we can do better. Yeah. Uh, look, this is the ultimate Smallville rewatch podcast. Each week we go back, we watch episodes. I see episodes, many episodes I haven't seen. Sometimes we remember stuff. Sometimes we don't. And we're speechless. But that's why we like you to call in on the hotline, which is Ryan. Uh, 213 Jet Cute, we decided. J E T C U T E, the hotline. Leave your messages to 20 seconds. We'll try to answer them. You might want to get ahead because there's a lot of messages that Bryce has to uh, weed through. Our socials, please follow us. Write a review if you like the show because it really helps the ratings, the standings at Talkville Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, at Talkville Pod on the Twitter. And uh, also, we got to say, and the best part, the best part of the podcast is hearing from you guys, just so you know, it is, it really is. Um, and we love the love that you're giving us, uh, Patreon, those of you who are patrons, we read your names out loud at the end of every show. We love doing it. It's tradition and um, go to patreon.com slash talkville to support the podcast and help us out if you can. Um, I tell you what, I was just watching to, I, w- I was just listening to watching to. I was just listening to Inside of You, and Ooh, man, thanks. did you guys read those names fast, those patron names. That was awesome. Yeah, we do it. And Ryan knows most of the last names. A lot of them are the same. Nancy. They, D. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> just like that, dude. <laughs> um, I made Smallville say. Butts. Butts. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I love it. I love it. And it really helps the podcast when people give back, even if it's a dollar a month or whatever. Um, but the top tier patrons get their names right out and they get a lot of other perks. We also have a, a talkvillepodcast.com and we have some a uh, few pieces of art left. They're on there. May Charters, this artist, made these cool. Uh, well, she made an original and we made only 55 prints and they're almost gone. So, you know, um, there's still some available. So check them out. They're autographed by us. Uh, no one will there's ever... like a, there's like a few available. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I think not there's, many. yeah, there's not many out of 55 left at all. But um, I think, um, yeah, people are loving it, though. It's really cool. And I love I love her work. And we'll hopefully collaborate again with her this year. Um, that's really it on all that stuff. Uh, let's just do this. All right. Let's do it. I'm going to do it, Tom. I do want to do this. In fact, you know, you, you mentioned something real quick about uh, sometimes we remember things and sometimes we don't. There was a lot in here I didn't remember. And not to jump the gun, but the next episode it has is very Lex heavy. And I can't wait to hear of all the things you don't remember about the next episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Without further ado, let's get into season two, episode 14, Rush. You know what's funny is... um. I've been texting Sam Jones. I've been trying to get him here, and um, he's giving me the cold shoulder. Uh, <laughs> I think he tried to get on at one point, and it didn't work out. He broke his arm or something, and you know, oh well. This is a good episode for Sam, and I'm. Ouch. And uh, I'm, I'm. It sucks that he's not here um, with us. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Title is Rush. Aired February fourth, two thousand three. Director Rick Rosenthal. Rick Rosenthal had this voice. He directed. He directed a movie called Bad Boys, not Bad Boys Will Smith. Right. But it was called Bad Boys with Sean Penn, where Sean Penn's in prison. And I used to ask him questions. And, and he has this delivery. He's like, well, we didn't have a lot of money. And we just just had to. It's just, it's, I just love hearing him. And uh, we had lunch well, a couple I mean- months ago. And uh, it's not a it's not a secret. He looks like Santa Claus, so he it's does. like a lot of fun to to be with him. I I loved him. He's such a he's such a he great just guy. had such a great presence. Yeah. Um, did anyone else? Yesterday I watched this episode and I I was had this song in my head all day. Crush, crush, and it's your friend that you had on your Paul other podcast. Paul Abdul. Uh, I want yeah, to feel you breathe with me. It's actually called Rush. I kept singing rush. to myself, Rush, Rush. It is Rush. Which is it's ridiculous. called Rush. Yeah, this episode is, but the song is Crush. No, the song is also so I, called Rush Rush. So I was right? <laughs> well, apparently you weren't right. <laughs> yeah, Rush. I love yeah, that I song. Nailed it. She loves that song. I think that's her favorite song, too. We talked about it on the podcast. Um, all right. Hey, so- also, your, bud, your buddy Hall from Hollow Notes, do you know that uh, 
he talked about the guy from One Republic and really wanted to work with him. Do you remember Really? That? Yeah, I listened to the podcast yesterday. Yeah, I like that. Tom texts me when he likes a podcast. He's like, dude, yeah. I really like it. You're fangirling. I liked it. It's cool. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Uh, all right. Writers. Todd, all right. Todd Slavkin, Darren uh, Swimmer, uh, g- guest star Rob LaBelle as Dr. Frederick Walden, Corky Fella. Synopsis Pete and Chloe catch a bug for adventure and convince Red K. Clark to join them on their pursuit of death defying danger. What I liked about this is it wasn't a it wasn't all about getting to Red K. Clark. I did like that. I didn't see that coming. At yeah, all. I didn't see that coming. I was, and, I, and, and I got to see a lot of Pete, which I've been, if you've been listening to the podcast, I've been saying I want to see more of Pete, so. Yeah. Well, well, here we go. The episode starts with a rager as the students of Smallville party at the rave at a cave. Luckily, Chloe found the previously undiscovered cave by downloading directions off the internet. While Pete is concerned about the integrity of the paintings inside the caves, he's not able to prevent the debauchery inside at the party now, did anybody notice this is maybe the first reference to the real internet that chloe makes and then later in the episode uh lex still has a pager <laughs> <laughs> yeah well was that that was cool but she printed the directions off of map quest right map quest, map quest. Map, was, it, Probably. was map quest around then it must i yeah. mean that's what you did is you printed directions off of map quest i still that do was, it i still do it <laughs> I still have MapQuest. I still open MapQuest. Does it, does it still exist? There's not a... And you sign in on your AOL account? Maybe I do. I still All have right. Napster. I'm not kidding. I have Napster. It's like a new Napster or whatever, but it's called Napster and people don't believe me. They re- they rebranded a little bit like for subscriptions, but yeah. Yeah. Huh. Anyway. All right. Bohr Central University. Um, I love the kid in this. He was like an extra. He had like three lines and he was into Chloe and he kisses her. And I just felt like, man, the guy nailed it. He went in and it's, it's hard to be like, have a few lines and then just get out of there. But like, he made his presence known. I really appreciated that. Whoever the hell you are. What's his name, Ryan? Uh, Hague Sutherland. Hague Sutherland. Is he doing anything now? Uh, he, while you're looking, what I really liked is he kind of, he, he came in for the kiss and then he said his piece and then he got the idea to climb. He didn't just like kiss her and run off and like, ah, I'll kiss you on the way to do this. It was like, he did take his moments. I thought it was cool. It was sad to see him jump. Yeah. And, and I, I didn't put it together until later, later that I guess he was also bit by this thing in the cave, which made him do that. I was like, why is he doing this? It just kind of, I didn't put two and two together. I'm a little slow. Yeah. He's got, he says he's got seven episodes in the new Bob Odenkirk show. Are you serious? Yeah. That's coming out. Your this friend year, yeah. Bob. Good yeah. for you, Haig. Yeah. Haig. Yeah. H-A-I-G, I'm assuming that's how you say it, like Craig, but with an H. At the party, classmates Travis we, takes a shot with we Chloe. We should get him on the podcast. I should. So he kisses her, and uh, he makes a bold move. He climbs a nearby scaffolding, leaps to his death. Pete watches on. We see something bite him from the cave walls. The next day, as Clark takes a stroll downtown, he's interrupted by Pete, who is riding his dirt bike on the sidewalk, almost hitting nearby pedestrians. Clark's shocked by Pete's recklessness to not wear his helmet. Ryan, you must have loved seeing the, the motorcycles again. Oh, my God. I love motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy. <laughs> if about you know me. <laughs> Pete, what, Pete, what are you doing and without your helmet? New badass Pete has emerged egging on Clark for never taking a risk. And what does Clark do? He uh, heads across the street into the town to talk with Lana. The two talk about Travis's death for maybe a second. And they start uh, seizing the day. Life's so short that he asks Lana out. It's about damn I, time. I really like this scene. It didn't seem rushed. This is a moment we've all been waiting for. And it did seem like we took our time with that scene. I, I really like the way that it ended up. I think this was the best scene of the show. You you were both so uncomfortably happy and young and carefree. It's like, you know, the endorphins are going. Like when you meet a girl for the first time even if she's from Toronto or wherever and you, you just go, Oh my gosh, man, this feeling. I just, I, you know, you, you, you can just tell you really liked each other. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, so the marquee sign at the town reads espresso, your morning rush, a oh. rush. I want to feel you breathe with me. <laughs> Clark heads to the caves to clean up after the party and is interrupted by Lex, who comes to assess the damage. He's suspicious of Clark's interest in the caves, learning that he has visited them nearly every day. Oh, I also thought it was funny that the, Lex knows that because he has a security guard outside the caves 24-7, and he's <laughs> the one who told Lex. Yeah. I love that. Well, Lex is up to stuff. He, you know, he says he's not uh, spying on old Clark Kent, but he is, I guess. 
So Lana catches up with Lana, uh, Clark catches, uh, Chloe catches up with Lana at the talent. She finds out that Lana and Clark are going on a date and awkwardly gives her stamp of approval for the idea. I, <clears throat> I was a little bit like, I thought it was a little bitchy. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you be bitchy though? No, I think he'd be a little bitchy. I mean, he's already That's hard not to be. He's already told Chloe we're friends, and she always has known he's had a thing for for <laughs> Lana. She, what she should do is be a better actress. Not she's a great actress, but like as a character, she should be like that is awesome. I'm so happy for you. And then as Lana goes away, she just kind of goes. Just F. turns around and she's yeah. devastated. That we don't need to see yeah. anything because that's not how people. When you like. You know, people say, you know, when you're crying in a scene, well, as an actor, as a person, a human being, the, the choice is we try as humans to do everything we can not to cry. It's not just let's cry. We want to cry. We want not to cry, right. but it's coming out. So you right. want to be cool about this situation. And if it subtly comes out, but it was about as subtle as a fart coming out of the ass of a donkey. <laughs> well, and I don't remember. We'll, we'll have to see as the episode goes. I don't remember there's any redemption for Chloe. Mm -mm. with Lana after this scene in this episode. We'll see. Clark returns home to find his parents discussing Clark's future after high school. They're concerned about his academics because he's consistently ditching to visit the caves. And in this scene, they mentioned a call from Principal Reynolds confirming that he <laughs> indeed did not die in Redux. All right, so... I Sorry, real seeing. quick, and then I'll, I'll stop interrupting so much. No, we This scene was really important to me because there's a lot of uh, orchestration with Clark going to the refrigerator, taking out the juice, closing the door, not on the dialogue. And this was something that we were getting better at as a, as a team, me and Ned and, and John. And John was, would help me all the time, putting little things in there or being like, hey, when you close the door, you don't need your hands. You can use your foot or your elbow. Because he, he was really good about all that movement. And, and of course, our director was too. But there's a little beat in there where John adds, um, oh, really? Which is, he kind of punks Clark a little bit in the middle of the scene. And at the end, I'm pretty sure when he tells Clark to tell Pete not to do donuts in the field because he's uh, scaring the cattle, I'm pretty sure John just made that up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's an ad lib. I like but that. But anyway, okay. I like it. I like these little inside scoops. These little tid, when you call them tidbits. Yeah. At Luther Manor, Lex is visited by Dr. Walden, who's so nerdy. I love it. He's just a nerd. Real good casting <laughs> on this one. Nerd. He was like proud of it too. I love it. Like, it was so good. Yeah. Uh, his professors who's hiring to investigate the hieroglyphic cave paintings. Walden is resistant at first, turning down Lex's generous offer. But when he sees the paintings, he's in. Yeah. Inside the torch, Chloe and uh, Clark discuss Pete's strange behavior. Knowing about his date with Lana, Chloe then asks Clark what his plans for the weekend are. He plays dumb. Downtown that <laughs> night, Clark searches for Pete to take him to the hospital. He finds Pete on top of a car across the street. Pete hops down from the car and steps in front of a bus, unafraid of what might happen. Luckily, Clark super speeds away just in time, speeds him just away in time, and nobody notices. <laughs> I, I Again, I love the way Sam, what he does with Pete. You never quite know what he's going to do at any moment. And not, not in a, such a physically dangerous way, but Sam has his own way of doing things, and it's so much fun to watch him just like messing with Clark because he knows the secret and he runs away, yell, you know, yelling, he's an alien. I just thought it was fun. And the bus thing was cool. And yeah. look, I mean, there's a lot of people there. I thought it was a little bit like, how did no one see that? And like, uh, well, I well, mean, what are we supposed, just supposed to think that they assume he's insane? Like he's like, he jumped in front of a bus. Now he's screaming that his friend's an alien. Is that, mm. he's just like, yeah, okay. I'll let it go. But I like that he kind of ran off. My friend's an alien. He's an alien. He's like, he, it, imagine he's just on drugs. Yeah. Pretty much. So he's just running around. I don't care, man. Let's go. Um, yeah. The next day, Clark and Chloe go to investigate caves. Chloe approaches the same drawing where Pete was bit and ends up getting herself bit. Dr. Walden and Alex interrupt the two of them and Clark recognizes him from the books. Walden is upset that the kids are at his work site and orders Lex to give them the boot. The boot. I remember that scene because that was the coolest flashlight I'd ever seen. It was, it's like so bright it blinds you. And I remember being like, can I keep this? And they were like, no, it's like a $4,000 flashlight. I do remember that. I remember those caves where the, every, you know, the DPs like Glenn or whatever, they were always like, oh yeah, move it across the lens. We want to see the lens flare. It's so cool. I'm like, we do it every episode. Shut up. 
move it across the lens. Not so much. A little less, a little more. And we're like, we're trying to talk here. We're trying to do a scene. Yeah, I'm focusing on your lens flare. Talkville is brought to you by Athletic Greens, AG1. I don't know what I would do without you. I'm glad you're our sponsor because you've made my life so much easier. Instead of taking tons of pills and vitamins every day, I just take a little mixed drink. I just stir powder into a glass. It's t It tastes great. And I'm done. No more going to the grocery store and going, what's the best vitamin B I can take on the market? <laughs> um, it's it's pretty fantastic, Tom. We always talk, I always see you with your travel packs and you're like, look, travel packs. And I'm like, I roll my eyes. At well, you. the other thing is they send you this 16 ounce thing, which doesn't look like much, but you you put a little water in, you, you, you pour the powder in, you fill it up, you shake it up and you, it, it goes down for me like three gulps. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but, um, and then you're done. Yeah. And you walk away. Yeah. What's great is uh, 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality are in there. The all in one formula makes it easy for us to, or you, to take uh, care of yourself because that's what's most important. We talk a lot about health here. So if you want to start being a little healthier, this is, this is the thing to do. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. And AG1 can help make you feel energized, making it easier to live your best life. My AG1 is delivered to me every month, so it's super easy for me to make it a daily habit. If you are looking for an easier way to take supplements, folks, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash talkville. That's athleticgreens.com slash talkville. Check it out. Back at the Kent Farm, Pete shows up to surprise Clark in his loft. Clark goes on to use x-ray vision to see a parasite crawling around inside Pete. Clark urges Pete to come with him, but instead Pete whips out some, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, whips out some kryptonite to weaken him. It wasn't very nice. It wasn't very nice. Back in the caves, Walden shows Lex a parasite that they found inside the walls. Another thing I thought was funny is, so we have a scene in the caves, and then we have a scene in the loft. We go right back to the caves, and some people may not realize that when, a lot of times when you shoot in a location like the caves, you're shooting there all day. All scenes that take place in the episode are going to take place that day. And so part of back to back to back and part of being an actor is that whole thing of like, where am I coming from? Where am I going? And not just repeating the same sort of um, pentameter or rhythm in, in what you're doing. And I thought you did a good way of like coming in here and they lensed it where it like made it different and changed it. Um, so I, you know, good job. Like, hmm. Oh, thanks, man. Clark returns to the town to tell Chloe about the Pete situation and finds her making out with a random dude. That's the second dude she's made out with. All right, where's where's that guy, Ryan? Let's find him. Yeah, Is he I'm, also he, working he, with Bob I, Odenkirk? I looked it up earlier. He didn't get like a great credit. He's, I think he's just a... Make out dude. No, it's a, uh, the guy's <laughs> name is Sean Sipos. Or Sippos. And, yeah, I played uh, a makeout dude he's, in he's an episode of some Chloe's TV boy show. Thing. What, years ago? Chloe's boy Chloe's thing. Chloe's boy thing was his credit. Uh, Chloe suddenly has the guts to call out Clark for being so coy about his date with Lana. Clark asks her to wrangle Pete and bring him back to her house. She agrees it's a date. Clark then goes to tell Lana that their date is off because he needs to help his sidekick. Lana is understanding but upset. Uh, it's, finally, it's going to work. You kind of wanted Poor to Lana. see it. You wanted to see like a nice date. You want it and you're just not going to see this shit, man. What the no. Hell? Next, Pete and Chloe come storming into the town, both high on life and having different appearances. Um, Pete catches Clark off guard and slips some red kryptonite to his pocket. Let the party begin. And what do they do? Clark, let's go hang out in your loft. <laughs> Back to the loft. Kind of lazy. <laughs> kind of lazy writing, huh? Yeah. It's like, uh, cave, We can do loft, anything. Cave, let's go loft, to the loft. Talon, loft. Must have needed to save money in this episode. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the line producer's got a budget, man. I thought for sure they'd jump on the dirt bikes. I guess. Three fearless kids hit Clark's loft to plan their next adventure. There, <laughs> Clark shares his super secret with Chloe and performs all his otherworldly abilities. Chloe tests his abilities by falling from the second story and having Clark catch her. Just then, Lex walks in to request a private word with Clark. I, I love this. This was really, this was really cool. I mean, they're all bad. And look, <laughs> you know, one thing I know Ryan doesn't, Ryan doesn't like, go ahead, Ryan, talk about it. It's, uh, look, sometimes it's tough for me when the characters just flip, they just do a 180. I get 
it's boring. You're doing you're doing 22 episodes a year. You want to make it different. Like it, I get how it can be fun to just sort of flip everything on its head. But me coming into it fresh, <laughs> it's a little bit weird. It's a little awkward just to see everyone just do the opposite of what they normally do. Because all I could think about are the repercussions and how we're going to move on to the next episode. But again, like, you know, I'm watching this like just for this. I wasn't watching this on a week to week basis where it's like, it's okay. Like, you know, well, don't make excuses for it because I agree. And I also don't like that it's always just wrapped up in a nice bow. It's just like this, this episode, the three of them unhinged it is could unhinged. have bled into the yeah they, it could have gone into the next episode and wrap it up but it's like okay we've got a we've got to get them infected then chloe infected then clark red kryptonite and they do fun stuff and we wrap it up and everything's fine and it's so quick that it's just like it's abrupt and that's the problem i have with, with this episode and others like it is it's Okay, we know they're changing, and it's fun to see them like do this. But we know, we know like, they're going to go right back. It's a little to cringy. Them. By it's the way, cringy. I think I think the writers in this episode um, they'd be fun to have on the podcast because they they ended up being a big taking on a bigger role as the seasons went on and of running the show, and they were very informative. and And these are the conversations where I always think the writers who see this podcast must just be like, "F you," <laughs> because do you realize what we're trying to do in this? Hell all that they make us write in. Well, and we've the- talked ad nauseum about how <laughs> much credit we give the writers and that they aren't given a lot of, they don't have time. They have to, you know, and, and, and look, I'm sure the network didn't want it to be serialized. They wanted to wrap up every episode. This is what happens. But then as we understand that we like evolution, we like stories to evolve. We like characters to go in different directions we like stories not to end so yeah. abruptly i mean that's the best shows are that and i think this was early on in that sort of um dynamic i guess the point it's also a little bit of an allegory like oh my friends discovered ray cult- rave culture and now they're all into drugs and now we're gonna slip you a drug too friend now we're mm. all gonna oh it's a little bit of like what happens when your friends get into drugs maybe it was a cautionary tale maybe oh still chloe, a little weird chloe tells lex to get a toupee bitch <laughs> clark tells lex to get a phone and lex tells clark to not cross the line on an all new smallville chloe tells lex to get a toupee clark tells lex to get a phone and lex tells clark to not cross the line on an all new smallville tuesday at eight right after supernatural you know a cra- a, a, a stupid thing i remember is when clark pushes lex I remember that where we, we were standing there and they wanted the, they wanted it in one shot. And the way I push you, like, it doesn't make any sense the way I push you. And I remember on the day being like, this doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, but we don't have time. We're just going to do this one shot and then we're going to move on. And I was like, no, nah, all right, that's what we're doing. Because the push is, that's, you know, it's kind of weak. Uh, Clark, Pete, and Chloe hit the road. As Pete floors it, Chloe and Clark start going at it in the back seat. Sam did not like this scene. Why? <laughs> he, I just remember him being like, this is so weird. You guys back there doing that. And then they'd be like rolling and he'd be like, oh, he didn't like it. He just didn't like doing that scene. It was very uncomfortable for him, In a, it, which actually helped Allison and I, because we were both uncomfortable too. But I, maybe Sam was like doing us a favor by being so uncomfortable that, that we could just make fun of him. I don't know. Do you remember enjoying it or just kind of like, this is just work. Here we go. It's always just work. I mean, not to... I mean, I, I've done these kind of scenes in a couple of different movies and stuff, but as you know, it's, you got 150 people watching you, oh, you know, you got camera guys in your face. It's not, it's not as romantic as sometimes it looks. Yeah. The kiss and Kristen was cool. They take their makeout <laughs> session to the town and continue to take things to the next level playing imaginary strip poker. <laughs> Luckily, this means the red kryptonite is removed from Clark because he was in the jacket. Unfortunately, Lana sees the two of them making out. Poor Lana. Yeah. Back, back to his senses. Clark once again tries to get Pete and Chloe to go to the hospital. Instead, Pete delivers a kryptonite punch and knocks out Clark. First Clark knockout of the season. Chloe and Pete continue their joyride. They take their car off to the edge of a cliff, planning to launch it. They hit the gas. Anybody and- else think of Thelma and Louise? Anybody? <laughs> I never it saw that. But that's you never the only saw Thelma and Louise? I know, like the famous jumping off a cliff scene. So they die? I mean, I'm not going to tell you if you haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. They're like, they're running away from the cops. And the only thing they have is like each other. 
and they go. Is it sad? That's, That's a great it, movie. It, you got to watch it. I haven't seen the whole well, movie. Well, I just found out what happens. Well, it, it's been out since, what, 92? It's too late. It's why it happens that's more important. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Back to also, the senses. They, they were wearing their seatbelts, by the way. In, oh, yeah. The They're scene. wearing their seatbelts. <laughs> They're like, I have a death wish. I'm invincible. I want to die. I don't care. I have a rush. Put on your seatbelt, please. Let's make sure the airbags are intact. Boo. Boo. They're on their joyride. They hit the gas, send it off a clip. But before the car crashes to the ground, guess what? Clark's there. He catches them and finally gets them to uh, takes them to the hospital. Um, did I, I did I miss? Did they was the whole plan was to get Clark to catch them or they really were just going for it? They were just going for it. They didn't care. Why did the guy wow. jump off in the beginning to kill himself? Yeah, that's true. He's like, I don't care. That's crazy, man. But uh, you got to rush. I really like that scene. I really like that scene. I thought it was really cool how they did it. They had a they had a crane right holding the the thing up, the truck, the the car, right? I would I would think so. I were they in the car? Do you remember Sam and Chloe? And I think they were. I think they were. Hmm. Yeah, I you know they kind of pull it up like this, and because I remember my my stunt double Chris Sarah, he he would be he would go in and check everything, and he made them lower the truck uh, the car a couple times, and I remember they were mad at him. Sometimes, sometimes what happens is the stunt guys get in trouble because they're they're trying to protect their actor, and production's like get out of here, stop making yourself look important. But he was, you know making it safe um and so i do remember looking up and seeing sam there uh back to her senses clark checks in with chloe to see how she's doing trying to find out if she remembers seeing his powers or their makeouts luckily she does not um, she's pregnant uh unluckily lana still does that night clark talks with his parents about the situation they share their disappointment in pete and just before jonathan can continue pete himself enters the house to apologize damn Back at Luther Damn, Manor, was Walden comes to meet with Lex and learn more about the parasites they found. Lex shares that the parasite is otherworldly and alien-like. Lex goes on to demand that Clark continues to receive access to the caves. While Jeff Loeb says we never got a Lex shot, coming out of the fireplace, we at least end here with him right next to it. Oh, you? there's lots of shots of you stoking the fire. That's for sure. Hmm. The episode ends with Lana closing up at the town and Clark popping in to try and save face with pizza and a rose. I thought that was a really nice moment. It was like there's nothing to be said after she says, you know, what was your excuse? And you have uh -huh. nothing to say or whatever. And you just put the rose down and you go your separate ways. And she's thinking, he canceled the date on me and made out with Chloe. This guy's a pig. But he's so sweet and nice about it and gives me a rose. Is he psychotic? Is he fucking sorry, F bomb, bleep that? Like what's what's going on? I mean, really, it's crazy. Could you imagine, like, hey, what are you doing? Um, why are you here? Uh, what would you mean? You just you made out with Chloe. Oh. You canceled our date and made out with Chloe. Oh. Well, here's a rose. I feel like what I see it at the end is. I feel like she's going, why do I still care about this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Why do I care? Yeah, I don't know. Small town. <sighs> it's a good rose. It's a very good rose. All hey, right. Hey, now. Hey, now. Don't dream it's over. I mean, it was, a, it was fun. It's, I Listen, going back to the conversation we had before, I, I like seeing the characters just break character. I, I was thinking, like, this must be fun for the audience, too. It's... You get to see Clark all confident and Coley all aggressive and Pete all crazy. It was just fun. Yeah, there were some good things in this episode. There were some really, really corny things, too. Um, <clears throat> interesting things of note, the episode once again features red kryptonite. And while under the influence of the parasite, Chloe and Pete wear a lot of red. This is the first time Chloe learns about Clark's secret, though he she forgets about them. In the scene where Chloe and Pete drive off the car, or drive off the cliff, they have... The actors in the car suspended by a crane. I was right. 
they pulled the two upward and reversed the footage for the effect. Pete describes Clark as my brother from another planet. Fun fact, the 1984 film The Brother from Another Planet starred Joe Morton, Dr. Stephen Hamilton. No way. Yeah. That's awesome. Chloe jokes that a little Moby won't hurt the caves, a reference to techno-electronica musician Moby, but it's not Moby playing in the scene. So interesting. He was big. He was big at the time. Still is big. I mean, but um, I don't know if he's that big anymore. I think he was the first guy to break out and make that kind of music popular. Like he, he gets a lot of credit for that. Yeah, you know, I dated a a woman many <laughs> years ago. And I dated a woman. It wasn't Moby who went out with her after it. Uh, Beck, I think, married her. I think hey, I think I'm confusing Beck and Moby. See, I like Beck actually. I mean, they're super talented. And Marissa Rubisi is just awesome. She was awesome. She was a uh, we. I mean, we went out for just a couple dates, but she was the. Is she that was in, is her brother the actor? Yeah, Giovanni. Giovanni. Yeah, nice, sweet guy too. But um, Marissa, I mean, we just went on a couple dates. This was 20 years ago, by the way. But she was awesome. Such a nice person, um, and really talented. Remember in Days Confused, she was. Yeah. Um, she was like the redhead who Matthew McConaughey goes on. He was hitting on. He's like, all right, all right. What do you say? You ditch these two do- dorks oh. and head out with me. Yeah. I didn't she's, know that was she's her. She's so cool. Yeah. She was oh, awesome. Wow. But she, you know, she didn't want to go out with me. She wanted to go out back. Anyway. You weren't, you weren't a music, you, you weren't really a musician back then. Maybe that was it. This is uh, the hotline. Uh, we're going to start with a video from our patron privilege. This is Thomas the Leaf Blower. Thomas, thanks for uh, supporting the show and being on Patreon. And go to patreon.com slash talkville. Let's see what old Thomas has to say. He's in a store, I believe. Hey, it's Thomas the Leaf Blower here, and I've got a question for Season 2, Episode Rush. This episode was a lot of fun seeing all the crazy stunts that Chloe and Pete and Clark are getting into. And I just had a question about the quarry at the end when Clark catches them in the car. There's this one shot from the interior of the car where they're looking down and they see Clark holding the car. I was wondering, how was that done? Did they just like digitally put that in the windshield afterwards or did they actually angle the car with like a crane and had clark tom holding it good question we talked about that it was a crane and tom was there but he doesn't remember a lot but you remember seeing them uh the actors in the car but uh, they shot it in reverse as we said on facts um but you remember anything else tom or is that about it i i now that we talk about it again i do remember like it's like when you do wire work with actors and and they're in the wires but you're not or they're underwater like you were in the pilot and and I'm not. And you have to be very compassionate and patient because you're not the one who's in this stressful situation. And um, I remember them, you know, it's not fun to be hanging from a car with face down and you know, it's, it doesn't feel good. No. So Brian G. Brian G. Oh, Brian G. What do you got for us, big Brian G, little BG? Hi, this is Brian G from Florida. Am I alone in thinking Rush would have been stronger if it focused on Pete and Clark instead of pivoting to repeat the love triangle from Red? Ryan said Pete was scared of spilling Clark's secret. He does that here, but they barely talk about it. Lydia show Jonathan helped screw over the Ross family with the losers for Clark's adoption, but Pete never finds that out, and that would have developed his relationships with Clark and Lex. You're very smart, and perhaps you could have been an associate writer on the series. Um, no. What was the question? That was a lot of good information. I mean, you ultimately, like- ultimately, what I got out of it is like the love triangle. Why are we going back to that? I thought that was over, that it's repeating itself. Why not get into more of the friendship with Pete and Clark and you know the adoption thing? And if he knows about that stuff, that could have added to that, right? Sort of. I don't know. I, I thought it gave Chloe an opportunity to show the audience that she's capable of commanding her own, um, like taking charge. I don't know a better way to say it. Destiny or whatever. Have her own destiny. I think that's what we were seeing because she's at the mercy of Clark and Lana all the time. And then she's like, you know what? I'm going to kiss this dude. I'm going to kiss this dude too. I'm going to do what I want. And I think maybe that's really what we were trying to see. Mm-hmm. And Pete, funny enough, she, I, I, I thought it was funny that we didn't see any jealousy at all Be- because Pete always kind of had to think for Chloe too. At least that we kind of played with that. But, um, I don't know. Good question. A lot of information there. Um, I, I, I just enjoyed seeing it. So I wasn't so upset that they repeated it. I, I just, it's almost like we've got an episode called Nicodemus and it changes people's personalities. We've seen it. 
So my thought is when they pitch this episode and it changes their personalities and they become, uh, we had an episode like that. So let's not do that again. It's only season two. And for them to repeat something like that, it just was like, that's the thought I had when watching this. I was like, you know, same thing with Ryan. It was like, you know, a little cringeworthy again. It was fun. And yes, it's 22 episodes. So you have to have a variety of things, but, um, it's, it's a very strong network note for most television shows that if something works, you want to see a different version of that again in a reasonable amount of time. And the fact that we, they repeated it, I think probably has something to do with the fact that it was fun to watch the first time. And I think as we continue, we'll see a lot of that. Um, that's my sort of thing. But, yeah. I'm going to say one thing and you may not like it out there. But I think that if this was on a different network like FX or HBO or the show would have been exponentially better. It was a great show. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But I think if a lot of these goofy things wouldn't fly, you know, network forcing you to do certain <laughs> things. If we want to see more of that. We want to see more of the love. Maybe it would have. But I think it would have been more grounded. I think it would have been a little more for a, grounded. For a, I just for think a that, superhero show. Yeah, I mean, it could, but it could be. Like, think about it. But super, yeah, superhero shows weren't grounded yet. Exactly, that's true. I mean, you had your hands full. You're doing 22 episodes. We've talked about this. This is Amelia. Amelia, this is going to be a quick answer. I know it, and a quick question. Hi there. This is Amelia calling from Raleigh, North Carolina. Goofy question, but it's about that scene where you're making out with Chloe and she rips your shirt off and all the buttons break. I see this a lot in movies uh, and TV, but I've never been able to do that in real life and was just curious how they film those, um, how you all do it. All right. Thanks so much. Loving the show. All we could say is movie magic. We can't tell you those. I love, I love that. I've never been able to do that in real life. That's, that's amazing. It sounds like there's been multiple attempts. Uh, They definitely make sure that the buttons come off easily. It's like one thread. It's a special shirt. They maybe have two or three of them ready. Um, if, yeah. How many shirts did they make you think of that? Probably two or three. And, and Steve was probably like, don't touch the buttons until the same. You know, that <laughs> you kind of like, you better make it work. I'm not doing another one. You I don't better care. Make I don't care. Work. We got to get Steve on the show. Should we call Steve right now? Let's, let's call him when we have a, like something to really like. Okay. Here's Ed. This is Ed from North Carolina. For Tom, did you ever feel like using the red kryptonite over time got a little bit more tough to, you know, be that kind of Clark? Or did it get more ridiculous for you and uh, impractical for the use? Um, because I loved red kryptonite, Clark. But I just imagine like over time where the seasons it got a little weirder. That's a good question. I think in that scene in the loft, I, I, I sort of remember it might have been Allison or Sam. They hadn't really seen red Clark. And so when I was acting that way they were i remember them it might have been allison being like that's really good like you're really different this is really fun and i remember being like thank you it was it's, it's, it was like i appreciate that it's a good tom's filming yeah. 14 hours a day doing the same thing it's like this is a chance for him to go all right i could do something else i could have fun it mixes it up yeah audra this is the last question today on the hey guys this is audra from louisiana um i noticed that this episode had a big range of emotions in it. Thought it might be a good time. Can you walk us through the process of the eight to 10 days filming? Like, did you have time for a walkthrough at the beginning to run lines or you had to just jump in there and go for it for the scene? Jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, there's no rehearsal. I mean, in the pilot episode, we do a table read, costume fittings, this, that. And when you're shooting, there's an occasional costume uh, change or uh, uh costume what do you call it try on fitting. things fitting, fitting wardrobe fitting if you're wearing something that's really different but for the most part you wake up you go to set you open your trailer there's clothes in there that you're supposed to wear hopefully they fit um if not they'll make adjustments you go in the makeup you do your makeup you go on set you read the scene they they light it and boom you film it and that's how it rolls well and i also what i heard in that question is when you get to set there was something called a blocking where the actors and the, the cinematographer and the director would sort of see where people are going to go and you make adjustments in the set. And one of the things we did on Smallville is we kept those very quiet and private. Um, and I've found on other sets, that's not always the case. Um, 
Like we would really not have anybody else around because that was the time for us to really fr be free and, and make mistakes and, and, and sort of narrow things down so that then we walk away and the cameras can be set up. Uh, that's what I thought she was asking about. And then, but that, that again is like 15 minutes that you go back and then you're in. And then we, you, we mostly did it as written with a couple maybe jabs in and out, depending on who you're working with and what the other actors are. But it's, there wasn't like, oh, say whatever you want on this take. No, that didn't, show didn't work that way. Rosenbaum rating system. Three roses is the best, then two, then one, then a heater down the middle, and then one, two, and three bombs. Three bombs being the worst. What's the worst show we've had so far? It was the Whitney Solo one, I think. Or, I think I gave it two or, and a half bombs. It might have been the worst. No, there was another one. Did I give three bombs to one yet? No. It's never happened. No. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this one a bit. I want to I say 1.5. You can do a rose and a half. I do a rose and a half. Rose and a half for Tom. Ryan? I think I'm going to go half a rose. These are tough for me. Oh. It's tough for me to like to to watch them now. Like coming. No at honesty, it. buddy. It's Look, uh, honesty. These these ones don't do it for me. I'm going to do a half a rose too. I, I I think it's a half a rose. I think it's if someone says it is a heater, it's like ah, uh, there's some kind of cool stuff. Maybe you want to fast forward <laughs> it. I don't care. I think it's also one of those episodes where like if you've never seen Smallville and somebody says watch this episode, you'd be like. Oh, not what me. else is there? not me i agree who are these no? first of all you'd be like i don't know these characters and now they're <laughs> doing these things and now there's like what is going on with the red kryptonite word i don't know i'd be lost lost in emotion <laughs> death and save count three dead travis and two other students kill themselves in dangerous accidents after being infected um uh let's see two saved pete and chloe are saved from the parasite um actually Clark saves Pete twice, Bryce. I rhymed. The bus. Remember? The bus. I mean. And then at the end in the car. Mm -hmm. So that's twice. So really there's three saves. So add a save through 14 episodes, season two, 22 <laughs> dead, 25 saves, series 52 dead, 60 save. Ryan's favorite scene. All right. Uh, in spite of that, I do have a favorite scene. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in spite of what I think otherwise, uh, scene number one, uh, Clark saving Pete from the Jeep, uh, not the Jeep, Jesus, the bus scene number one, Clark saving Pete from the bus mm. scene number two, where they are all high and showing Chloe how the powers work mm. and scene number three, where, uh, Lana denies Clark don't dream it's. Oh, I think, I mean, one. I think it's Lana denies Clark. I think you like that stuff that it's got a bigger mm. effect than just the singular episode. I'm going to go Chloe in the loft. Chloe finding out the powers of that. I thought that was my favorite. So it was cool. Ryan. I did like the Chloe in the loft scene. Yeah, baby. So you, I, so you, so you, but you're saying you like the scene that is the thing you don't like, <sighs> which is characters just turning different people. Yeah, all you're of a sudden. hypocritical. I am a hypocrite <laughs> by nature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for the episode. Stick around next week. This is a blast. Um, I We really appreciate you. Uh, join Patreon if you want to support the show. Keep it afloat. We need you right now. Uh, we're trying to get sponsorship and all that stuff, and uh, it, it's costly to have a podcast, so uh, we can't do it without you. Join Patreon today, patreon.com slash talkville. Um, and uh, next week, we talk about someone's return in season two prodigal let's take the discussion online let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at talkville podcast or at talkville pod write a review uh go to talkvillepodcast.com for cool merch and you could zoom with me and tom and uh, show your support for the patron which we talked about patreon.com slash talkville and if you want more info like merch from the show or our hotline number you can find all that in the description and uh, yeah please watch watch ahead of us and call in the questions that's my favorite part so yeah i mean selfish it is it's Always hold on to Smallville, folks. We love you. And once again, our top tier patrons. Without you, we could not do this podcast. I can't emphasize that. So if you want to join Patreon, please do. Support the podcast, patreon.com slash talkville. And we'll hopefully keep this podcast going because we love it doing it. It reminds me of the U2 song, With or Without You, except it's only with you. Mm-hmm. We're going to do this podcast with or with you. <laughs>
All right. Here are the names. Here we go. Uh, Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C, Janine R, Santiago M. Where are those statues, man? Leah S, Little Lisa, Thomas the Leaf Blower, Sophie M, Betsy D, Liliana A, Abby P, Ray Harada, Karen Apple M, Danielle B, 99 More, Lilani and Brett G. I was hoping you were going to keep going, but I always hold on to small. Esteban G, DJ Kento, Garrett W, Kimberly L, Justin S, Tom N, Tony V, Rodolfo. Jason W, Osama A, Lana Rhymes with Banana W, Nancy D, Brian G, Sarah W, Justin T, and Lucio. Actually, Lana Rhymes with Banana W. Uh, really? Amanda R, Teddy127, Michael P. Uh, Michael has to pee right after this podcast. Ryan R, <laughs> Grumpyitis, uh, Jordan M, Hillary B, welcome. Craig G, Christy R, Karen P, Derek G, Jorel, Richard S, Heather and Greg, Nico P, and I made Smallville say butts. Brian H, Eric K, Clark's mom, Kristen B, Takashi M, Kevin E, Nanine W, Stephanie K, Dark, Darth, Achilles, Finky, Mickey E, Stephen F, Damn. Who's that? <laughs> Jeanette E, Deadvid, Allison H, General Zod, Luke, L U C. The Daily Planet goes to 11. Shouldn't it be till 11? Our Achilles R, Big D, Doug R, Carlos C, Tommy Z, Boston 68, Isabel, Corey L, Ivy, and Sam, Mr. Home Arcade, Cal T, Amanda K, Jesse C, Lumberjack, Claire M, fourth favorite character underscore. We'd love her, Zoe. Scott S. D. Brown. Joshua W. Uh, Alice, be kind. Please rewind. Uh, Good luck with this one. Karen Ira. Karen Ira. Hey, oh. Karen Ira. M. Eldon Supremo. <laughs> Leslie V. Tatiana S. Robert G. Natalia G. Julie with one eye. I know, Julie. Jules. McBurts. Hi, McBurts. Ginger Moose. Knuckles. Leslie and Jordan. Christopher <laughs> S. Uh, Katie B, Michelle M, Drew, Little V. We'll get another little there. Brittany S, Small Yak underscore Sassy underscore Bibu. Small Yak Sassy Bibu. Marisol P, Michael R, Veronica Q, Sebastian F, and Cheryl H. I'm so glad you got that one with the underscores. Well, I'm not going to say the underscores next I'm time. I'm never going to say that one. I'll never say the underscores. Oh, good idea. Guys, we love you. We can't do it without you again. Thank you so much for the love and uh, always hold on to Smallville. Always.